Good afternoon and welcome to RPG Storytelling. Today is Friday, February 19th, 2021, and we've got a lot of fun things that we're going to talk about today for our Grain Prompts Live, so thank you for tuning in. Um, but before we jump into our uh, Grain Prompts, which we're going to do a deep dive on today, uh, I've got a couple of announcements that I wanted to share with you. Uh, first off, if you have not seen any of the announcements on social media or here on Twitch or anywhere else I've put them, uh, we actually have a new Discord community that uh, is st starting to grow. Uh, we've, we're starting to get some really good uh, community members in there uh, talking games, talking characters, talking character backstories. Uh, we're uh, looking at so many different opportunities that we're going to be able to put together for uh, the RPG storytelling community. So if you haven't already done so, I encourage you to hop on over to um, our Discord channel. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to have my mod do it this time, but I'm going to, uh, let's see if I can actually do this, I'm going to post our socials in the, uh, of course it's not going to work. Um, so I'll, I'll get the socials posted over here in a moment. Uh, so give me a moment because the system for some reason is not working. I'm still learning Twitch, so we'll figure it out together. But uh, let's see, where is it? I'll go ahead and throw these in there right now. Uh, these are all of the um, socials and links uh, for RPG storytelling, uh, so that we can, thanks for trying Dr. Wyvern. <laughs> I, I think I still need to work out some of the bugs in the system. Um, but, uh, so these are all the links. Uh, we've got our Twitch channel, which you're on right now. Uh, we've got our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and our Discord all linked right there for you. So you can check those out, join everything, follow us everywhere, um, and find out how you can help create your own really fun and interesting uh, character backstories for both the playable characters and the NPCs you may run. Um, in case you haven't already heard, February is, uh, we are dedicating to all of our dungeon masters, game masters, lore keepers, and whoever else runs the game to help them develop fun and amazingly in-depth uh, character backstories for the many, many NPCs that they have to play. Because in a given uh, game that may last from level 1 to level 20, uh, depending on the game system, um, a, a DM or GM or a lore keeper or whoever's running the game could have the potential of running through 20 to a couple hundred uh, various NPCs that the characters may or may not interact with more than once. <laughs> so uh, all this month we're dedicating to helping to develop uh, character backstories for NPCs. Um, so join us over on our Discord so that we can help you develop character backstories for the various characters and NPCs that you play. Uh, speaking of uh, Discord, just yesterday I put out this little announcement on my social medias and uh, on our Discord for the announcing the coming soon of our Friday game nights or Friday game days, depending on the length of the game, um, uh, where pretty much all we're going to be doing is playing one shots. So we're not going to do like campaign level um, uh, games. We're going to do one shots. So it may last one session, two sessions, maybe three or four sessions, depending on the length of the one shot. Uh, but that's really it. It's not uh, our players won't have to worry about uh, keeping track of a campaign level game or committing that much time to it. Um, so it's it's going to be fun. Um, we've got uh, we'll also be probably throwing in there a lot of uh, like multiplayer online games like Among Us, among <laughs> among other things. Uh, so Among Us and uh, others like that, where multiple people can get together and play a game together just to have fun. Uh, but as far as the um, the RPGs that we're going to play, be playing, the, the one-shots, these are no experience necessary. We're actually going to have a, a rotation of various players um, 
that are going to play these games. So it's not just going to be the same group of players every single game. It's not even going to be me DMing every single game. We're going to have guest uh, uh, dungeon masters as well um, leading the games. Uh, that way I can get a chance to play occasionally too. Um, but so if, if you're interested in playing these games with us uh, and, and live streaming it, like I said, no experience necessary. These are going to be very beginner friendly uh, and um, or the game itself might not be beginner friendly, but we're going to run it beginner friendly so that everybody can enjoy it. Um, we're even going to do it so that uh, while we're live streaming it, even though I want the players to primarily focus on the game, I'm going to have them interacting with chat as well, because I'm going to have chat up. I'm going to have uh, various things to, to chime in for chat, and um, we'll figure things out as we go, and we'll just ba make it a whole community game. So it's, it's literally a Friday game night for everybody, not just those who are actually on the live stream. Uh, so come and join us. Uh, you can find more information on our Discord channel, um, and we can get you added, added to the group if you're interested in joining us, or if you just want to watch, <laughs> there you go. You've already got a, another game you can watch, or a series of games, because it's going to be a one, bunch of one-shots. So uh, that's coming up in the pipeline. Uh, you will see in the socials that I had posted over in the chat that we do have a YouTube. Right now, I've only got three uh, videos up right there. I'm work I'm slowly working on getting more added. I promise. I'm really trying to get them out there. Um, but what I'm doing is I'm posting all of our live streams over to YouTube so that you can watch us at your leisure. So if you, in case you miss our live streams while we're actually live, you can go over to YouTube. Uh, hopefully, once I can get all caught up and everything, uh, you can watch all of our, our live streams at your leisure. So whenever you have time available, it could be early morning, late night, middle of the day, whenever. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Subscribe to all of our channels. Um, help support our stream. Help support uh, RPG storytelling with everything that you, that you can and that you're able to. Um, and we appreciate everything you're able to do for us. Uh, let's see. I think I had one more announcement. I can't remember what it was. Um, see the games. Uh, the Discord. Uh, still got the, the website that's coming hopefully in March. Um, uh, hopefully beginning of March even. Uh, so that uh, you guys can find all of our grain prompts, various uh, blog articles written by myself and, and others, hopefully. Um, we're going to have a, a very a series of different uh, templates that you can download to help you further develop your character backstories. So uh, as soon as I get that ready, I'll post those that information for the website as well. Uh, so keep an eye out for that. And then uh, I think that's it for announcements. Uh, so let's do our jump over to our grain prompts, which is our main purpose for today. Uh, so our, our two top, the first topic we're going to talk about is quest givers. Uh, you could e easily say that when it comes to role-playing games, whatever system, whether it be Dungeons and Dragons or Warhammer or Star Wars or Pathfinder or Call of Cthulhu or whatever, NPCs or non-player characters are kind of like the lifeblood of the game itself because they give um, your player characters or the player's characters, depending on who is hearing this, um, the opportunity to interact with their world instead of just going from point A to point B and fighting a dragon or fighting whatever enemy comes up. The, the NPCs are the ones that give life to the campaign or to the game in that um, this is where Players find information, they go shopping, they buy food and drinks, they get lodging, um, they go on secret missions and things like that. So the, the, the NPC, and most specifically the quest giver, in whatever form they may take, are the lifeblood of what keeps the game going and what game gives the game um, a direction, if you will. Um, so I know that as you're coming up with um, information that your quest giver can give out to the player, that's that's probably sometimes a, a difficult thing to do, sometimes, depending on what you know about the the information that you're trying to give out. Um, but coming up with the, the, the conversations and everything, that's 
typically on the fly. Um, you, you come up with that information as needed. Um, but the for the players, having that information is one thing, but believing the information or believing the person that's giving them the information, that actually comes down to the quest giver's backstory. If you don't have a believable uh, quest giver, your characters are probably not going to want to trust them. They're not going to want to take up the mission. They're not going to want to go on that quest. Uh, so by having a backstory for your quest giver, uh, you can actually create more of a realistic person that has a need, has a, uh, has a drive to either give out the information or to hold back information, depending on how you want to work it. So... Uh, as with any NPC, they can fall, a quest giver can fall anywhere on the spectrum from good to evil. But making them believable and worthy of being listened to comes from that backstory, like I was saying. Uh, so one thing you want to do is look at that character's motivation for giving information or giving hints to your players. Why do they want to do this? What, is, what are they getting out of it? Um, so, for instance, just to throw one out there, I'm going to think of this one off the top of my head. Um, if you have a thief, for instance, that in the, in the world itself, they may not be, be very believable, but if they happen upon, if this one thief, um, happens upon a piece of information that is, is just like mind-blowingly huge and they have no idea what to do with it when your players come along and somehow interact with this thief um it, it could be hard for that uh, quest giver or that thief to want to give that information so maybe the players have to bribe them to give get a, give information or maybe um it's a uh kill or give information situation where if the thief doesn't give the information, the players are going to kill them. Murder hobos are, are everywhere, so we got to have fun with them too. Uh, but try to find out why your um, quest giver, or in this case the thief, has this information. Why would they want to share it? What would they get out of um, sharing that information with the players and what the ultimate outcome would be? Um, once you're able to uncover that motivation, um, you can start to go even deeper and look at how did this quest giver, or in this case the thief, come across the information to begin with? Uh, using the thief as our example, uh, were they raiding a tomb or, or um, somebody's house and found these documents that had all this information, or was there a specific book or jewel or something that they were going after that led them to uncovering this information that they're now holding secret, ready to possibly give to the players. So look at how they came up with the information, where they, where they got it, um, what the circumstances were of them getting it, and how much that quest giver's life might be in danger for just having the information or even worse, for giving that information. That way it gives you a reason to kind of hold some back as well. Um, but let's see. Then once you've got the motiv motivation and you've uncovered how the, the quest giver came across the information to begin with, you can start to look at how are the PCs or the player characters going to figure out that this NPC or this quest giver has the information that they're looking for to begin with. Um, using that thief again, um, you can look at maybe this thief tried to pick the pocket of one of your party members and they got caught. This gives them a, a reason to interact with the thief, aside from maybe just killing him, hopefully not, but if, if you work it the right way, you can have them actually interact that way. Or maybe, um, the thief was in the process of burglaring, burglaring, that's a hard word to say, I don't know why, uh, robbing someone else, um, and the 
party members came in and were about to do the same thing and they happen to run into each other while they're doing it. Um, that's another way. So there's a lot of different ways you can you can create the interaction or the, the, the possibility of the interaction so that your characters and or your player characters and your NPCs will have a chance to meet, interact, and uncover the secrets of what's going on. Uh, but wait, you say. I, I love throwing the little quotes in, in there like that, where it's kind of conversational. Uh, but wait, you say, what if my quest giver is an inama inanimate object like a book or a piece of art or a song or a piece of jewelry or something? Uh, which is a lot, actually more common than you might think. Uh, there's a lot of instances where your player characters might be uh, in a dungeon somewhere and they happen across, like, say, a uh, cursed sword or a magical book or spell scroll or some kind of in a inanimate object that has a purpose. They may not know what the purpose is yet, but the, that this item, or you as the dungeon master or game master, uh, will know that this item has a purpose. Um, so even though your characters may not actually speak to somebody, they're going to get information from this item, whether it's identifying the item or reading the book or studying the painting or whatever they're going to be able to pull information from this. It might, it might not be much at the time, but the more they dig, they're going to uncover that these inanimate objects were actually created by somebody for a purpose. So the person that actually created that item then becomes the quest giver. Um, so you can start to go back in time to when this item was first placed in this dungeon or wherever it happens to be located, and you can start to see that this person who put it there um, or created the item wherever it happened to be created did it for a reason um, to store knowledge to store information to provide a prophecy of sorts maybe um, so you can start to do that deep dive back in time and say what did this past individual or individuals, if there's multiple people that created it, uh, which is sometimes the case with some books, um, how, what was their purpose for creating this this item? What was their need? Uh, why did they share the information in a way that could be seen for future ge future generations? Um, you can start to look at who that person was, how they contribute to the story in the long run, uh, like. For example, if you happen to watch the uh, show Critical Role, um, there is currently a character in the storyline uh, that was a wizard. I don't want to share too much, but uh, this person was a wizard hundreds of years ago and had created an item that in some sh way, because I don't want to give spoilers, allowed the the current players to interact with this item and find information with um, through this item <laughs> I, I, it's hard not giving spoilers um, so the the, the, the the crew of um, the mighty nine was able to get information through this item and they also learned about the person that created the item as well so that that person now becomes a quest giver and is kind of able to provide more information about what they're currently experiencing or possible ways to navigate what they're currently experiencing. So these are kind of a lot of different ways that you can look at um, how a quest giver can both come across information and share that information in some very inter interesting and secretive and uh, sometimes very complex ways with your players. So these are things you want to keep in mind. Um, and one thing you definitely want to keep in mind as far as developing these backstories for your quest givers um, is that your players are probably going to ask some very interesting questions on occasion. Um, 
and it, it's literally just on the fly that they'll come up with them. You have no idea what they're going to ask until they actually ask it. So having these backstories kind of gives you something you can pull from to help answer those char those player character questions. Um, one example that I used in the in the grain prompt itself, as you can see there on the screen, is um, you'll never know what kind of off the wall questions your players will ask about where the object came from or why it has su such specific information about your player's pet pig Henwin, which happens to see visions of black cauldrons. Yes, I will say that is a nod to the uh, Walt Disney movie from the 1980s uh, called The Black Cauldron, taken from a book. I can't remember who wrote it, so uh, don't hold me to that. Uh, but yeah, it's a great movie. Part of it is about a pig named Hendwin that sees visions about a black cauldron. <laughs> so I had to throw it in there. It was kind of appropriate. Uh, so speaking of um, quest givers and NPCs, we now jump into other NPCs that may have information or more nefarious purposes um, that your players will probably definitely interact with at least once. Um, these are these are non-player characters that the dungeon master or gamekeeper or whoever's leading the game will come up with that have something. Uh, Thank you, Dr. Wyvern. Uh, the book, The Black Cauldron, was written by Lloyd Alexander. Um, so it's a it's a great movie, uh, animated uh, from D Disney. Uh, it's an even better book. Uh, so definitely read the book, uh, and don't try to compare them because there's a lot missing in the movie that's in the book. But anyways, back to our uh, our nefarious or possibly nefarious NPCs that want to find more power or attain the ultimate power and become a deity. Uh, some examples of uh, characters within, like for instance, Dungeons and Dragons or the Dungeons and Dragons universe that have gone through this, uh, this uh, quest, if you will, this um, exchange of humanity to godhood, um, are there's one that's kind of benevolent ish uh she is known as the raven queen or the the queen of death basically the the the, the one who escorts the dead uh into uh their final resting places um and then on the flip side there's one that's not so benevolent uh he was very much evil uh, still is very much evil, uh, and that would be the character known as Vecna. Um, Vecna started out as a human or a human-ish, humanoid type creature. Uh, I can't remember the exact race, but his, he had a very troubling childhood, um, grew into learning about wizardry and uh, magic and arcana, and started on down a, a dark path and started reading more and started writing more. He actually helped create the book, uh, The Book of Vile Darkness. Uh, and helped, I think that was just one of the books he helped create, but in his evilness and in, in his quest for power, he actually sacrificed his life as a human and became what's known as a lich or basically an undead or undying uh, wizard. So they, they draw power from the living to keep themselves in existence, uh, for lack of a better way of putting it. I can't talk. For lack of a better way of putting it. Um, and Vecna wasn't satisfied with just being a lich. He wanted more. So he sought out trying to be, or sought out to see if he could become a god. Um, and unfortunately, he kind of succeeded, kind of didn't succeed, and then succeeded, and it went back and forth a lot between how it how it played out in the various storylines that were uh, became official through Wizards of the Coast. Um, but using those two as examples, you can have an NPC within your game that wants to reach out and try to attain this same level of power. So the first thing you want to look into is why does your um, your character or NPC want to 
elevate themselves to such a lofty level? Is there something in their past or present that happened that they never want to see happen again? So they're ser searching out godhood as a way to make sure that that never happens again. Um, did they study for a, for a certain trade or like wizardry or um, sorcery or some other magic or s some other um, level of study uh, in martial weapons or whatever? Um, and they became so powerful and so addicted to that power that they had desired so much more? Or did they happen upon a prophecy or an entity, meaning a deity or, or other god or maybe a devil or a fiend or something, that has since corrupted their outlook on life and is now controlling them? Um, it is possible, even though it's not officially in the rules anywhere, uh, within Dungeons and Dragons, it is technically possible for a warlock who makes packs with demons and devils and fiends and Fekna um, and uh, attains power that way. Uh, for wizards, there's a, sp a specific ritual or something that they're supposed to accomplish to be able to become a lich. Warlocks can kind of do the same thing. They just have to go about it a very different way. Uh, so it's it's harder to research, harder to find information about. But anyways, that's off on a tangent. Um, but these types of characters, uh, once they get to a certain level of power, they might become con corrupted in their understanding and, and their beliefs through whatever means and may become addicted to the power that they have and through that addiction and, and everything, they may desire more. They may desire to go that extra step further towards becoming a god. So that's where you can start to look at their reasoning, their, their purpose for wanting to do this. For every single character, it's going to be a very different story. Um, and it's up to the, the dungeon master or gamekeeper or whoever's leading the game um, to decide on why this NPC wants to elevate themselves to that level and why they crave this power so much. The second thing uh, that, you, that you would need to do in order to develop the backstory for these characters is look at how they are going to go about accomplishing uh, attaining godhood. Um, is there a specific item or book or spell that um, they must attain and, and collect and piece together and uh, through some ritual that they must complete, uh, they'll achieve godhood, such as um, maybe a ritual that you'll have to have in some way, um, it's always fun to see if your players can do it for you, um, collect um, these items, possibly like the hand or eye of Vecna, or both even, um, to be able to achieve these, the, enough power to create the ritual to um, achieve godhood. Or maybe they, um, this NPC has to sacrifice a specific person or multiple people and drink their blood to achieve uh, their godhood uh, or deityhood, such as uh, characters like uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, or maybe um, um, Strahd from the Curse of Strahd campaign. Uh, these are characters that crave power. They crave... Um, hey, Bingers! Welcome to the party! Glad you could join us. Um, so these are characters that um, their thirst for blood is what drives them to do these horrible things that could possibly elevate them to godhood. Um, another thing you can look at is maybe your NPC made a certain deal or a certain bargain with demons or devils or possibly an actual deity. Um, like maybe they were a, a cleric or a paladin and they made a deal with a, a deity for, for a certain amount of power to do something and then they became addicted to it. Uh, and then that addiction led them to wanting more and the how is they tried to draw more of that power 
by either sacrifices or uh, attaining magical items or whatever. So there's a lot of different ways that your character or your non-player character can go about creating a circumstance that is very personal to them uh, that may be extremely evil um, or in some cases uh, benevolent uh, that will lead them to it's it's usually going to result in some kind of sacrifice for that character uh, uh, so Binger says my friend just went on a dark tangent and showed some colors I didn't enjoy seeing so I left and saw you on thank you for the safe space oh I'm, I'm glad you found us Bingers I'm glad you uh, uh, came and joined us we're, we're very wholesome here uh, we sometimes talk about interesting dark characters like Vecna here but aside from that we're very loving we, we try to keep everybody safe and keep everyone happy um, I'm glad you could join us um, and if you have any interesting things you want to talk about, uh, feel free to throw them in chat. We'll definitely talk about them. <laughs> um, so, where was I? <laughs> um, so these types of characters, uh, doesn't matter if they're um, dark characters where they're searching for like evildom like Vecna did, or if they're more benevolent. I really can't talk today. Or if they're more benevolent uh, like a character that, or like the the NPC that eventually became the Raven Queen. So there's all definitely two options for going uh, to the evil side or the good side. But there's also a middle side too. There's players and and NPCs that can go right down the middle and find a, a deityhood through this process that um, they can kind of bridge the gap between evil and good or good and evil, depending on your viewpoint. So there's a lot of different things you can look at. There is one final thing that uh, you need to look at when designing a, an NPC that is seeking out godhood or deityhood. Um, and that is what are they willing to sacrifice to obtain the final prize? What are they willing to give or sac or yeah, I guess sacrifice is just a really good word. What are they willing to sacrifice to um, find godhood to get to that level? Um, there's a lot of different things. They could sacrifice friends and loved ones. They could actually sacrifice their very ability to love. Um, so if, if your character has love in their heart, but they want the deityhood even more, they may just sacrifice the love and never deal with it again in order to reach that level. Um, or maybe they're only willing to sacrifice their worldly riches and power. Uh, possibly they're like a, a king or a queen or, or some kind of high level NPC that um, is all they have is, is their money. All they have is their worldly power. And they're, maybe they're willing to sacrifice that to reach the godhood or deityhood. Um, or maybe they're so desperate for this prize that they're willing to sacrifice all of those things. The, the friends, the family, the love, uh, all of their worldly riches and possessions. And add in to it the sacrifice of their very own life and soul to attain it. This is very common for those NPCs that start the process by going to, from humanoid to lichdom. They basically sacrifice their life. They, they literally kill themselves in a way. Um, and using a phylactery and ritual magics, they become a lich. Vecna went the step further than that and not only sacrificed his life as a human to become a lich king, he went one step further and sacrificed everything else to become a god. Uh, so as you're do going about the process of developing these character backstories for your NPCs that are seeking out deityhood, um, you have to kind of look at all these different steps, the, the how, the why, the what, and kind of piece them all together and figure out how they work in this character and what it means for your character. Um, so 
as you're going through these, uh, I encourage you to, if if it's if it's for an evil type character, I encourage you to actually look into that dark side of the character, explore the darkness. I mean, try to avoid it in your own self, but for that character, explore that darkness. Uh, find out sometimes how evil and how dark you can actually take it uh, without getting just too much for your own mental health. Um, for the characters that are going on the good side of Deity Hood, uh, like the Raven Queen for instance, um, find out what it needs to what needs to happen to find that pure love, that pure uh, care that goes into creating a good um, NPC or a good deity. Thank you, Bingers. I, I, I try to provide as much good information as possible. Uh, we've got plenty of uh, videos on demand. I'm working on YouTube channels so you can watch all the, all the past shows as well. Uh, it seems like every show we do, it evolves and gets better and better. But I, I thank you for the love. Thank you. Um, if you haven't already joined our Discord, definitely join it. I'd love to talk to you more over there too. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Um, so as you're going through these, uh, as you're developing these non-player characters, just have fun with it. Get dark, get good. Um, just have fun with putting these characters together. Um, so bingers, in case you missed it, uh, the, the first topic, I, usually with these grain prompts lives, I usually talk about two different uh, grain prompts or, or backstory starter prompts. Uh, the first one was all about quest givers. So if you haven't, or if you didn't see it, um, when I was talking about it, I encourage you to go back and watch the video on demand. Um, a lot of good information about creating quest givers within your various um, RPGs, whether it be Dungeons, Dragons, Warhammer, or whatever system you're playing. Uh, so I think that about covers it for our grain prompts for today. Yep, takes us right back to our logo. So uh, for bingers, in case you missed it, I'm going to post and in case you don't already see it in the chat, I'm going to post um, all of our socials one more time for you so that you can just click a link and you won't, you won't have to worry about typing it. So we've got our Twitch link, which is the channel you're on right now. Uh, we've got our Instagram, which is RPG underscore storytelling. Facebook is RPG storytelling, no underscore. Uh, Twitter is my old username, which is uh, Fairy Fire RPG. Um, Eventually going to change that to RPG storytelling as well. <laughs> One of these days. And then I've got our YouTube channel on there. Currently there's only three videos on there, um, but I'm working on uh, getting all of these live streams moved over to YouTube so that people can rewatch them whenever they want. And then there's also our link for our Discord. Um, so uh, Bingers, for your information, uh, if you didn't already see the announcement, uh, we are starting to piece together various players uh, who might be interested in being part of a rotation of players uh, that uh, will basically, uh, for the, these, these games will be live streamed. Um, there, we're gonna be doing basically just one shots. So you, don't, you wouldn't have to worry about committing a time every single week to play these games or every other week. Uh, you'll basically, if you find time and we have a spot open for that specific game, uh, we'll throw, we can throw you into the game if you want. Uh, we'll play the game that night, then the next week or the next time we play. Uh, yay, I'm glad you joined the, the Discord. Thank you, Bingers. Um, so yeah, uh, these one shots are basically just gonna be one session. Uh, or maybe two or three or four, depending on the length of that actual one shot, um, that we're just going to play. <laughs> it's going to be com completely community involvement uh, so that uh, those people that enjoy watching like Critical Role or High Rollers or Misclicks or whatever else that's out there as far as live stream games, uh, it'll give the audience members a chance to actually come and play games themselves, even if they have never played a game in their life. Um, while the, the, the one shots may not be specifically used uh, beginner friendly, we're going to play them as if they are beginner friendly. We'll walk through, if we have a, like a player that's never played in their life, we'll walk them through every step of being able to play their game, even if it means we go longer in the stream or have to do a second stream to complete the game. 
I, lo I love being able to teach players how to play their games. Uh, I, and I'm hoping that over time we'll actually have uh, DMs that will come in and walk us through the process of playing games that I've never played. Because so far I've played Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> and I've played one session of Call of Cthulhu. That's it. I have no other experience <laughs> in other RPGs. So I'm, I would love to get... Um, uh, DMs and GMs and lore keepers and everyone else to come in and actually teach us games as well using one shots as the example. Um, so Bingers, if you want, uh, shoot me a message in Discord uh, using the at RPG storytelling tag and let me know that you're interested. I'll get you added to that group and uh, we'll start the process of uh, figuring out when we're going to play and who we're going to play and what games we're going to play and when we're going to play. There's a lot of when's, what's, how's. <laughs> we'll figure it out as we go. Uh, right now we're going through the process of trying to figure out what we want to actually call those streams. So we've got a few of those options in there. Um, but, so I think that about takes care of everything we have for today. Um, that, that's the other announcement I've completely forgot to announce. Uh, the, the movie nights that we used to have on Twitch, uh, here on this channel, on Tuesdays, I'm actually going to move those to Mondays. So now it's going to become Monday movies. Um, so that uh, I can actually have the opportunity to play another game on Tuesday nights instead. Uh, so so Mondays will, be, will now be our uh, movie nights. Uh, Tuesday, I will be off stream playing uh, another game. Um, Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday, don't really have a live stream planned yet. Uh, but Fridays, we've got uh, Grand Prompts Live. And then every first Friday, uh, we do a live Q&A, which is um, however long we can make it last, uh, talking about a specific topic or 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 tutorial or some other thing or maybe an interview occasionally like um, the la the one we did at the beginning of February I interviewed uh, my wife who is actually in our stream Dr. Wyvern um, she's been playing RPG games for the last 20 years so we we had a discussion as far as her her experiences with playing game these RPG games and creating characters and and character backstories and how she goes about um, role-playing those characters. I'm glad you're having fun, Bingers. I, I love that you're here. Um, can't wait to play with you, hopefully, one of these days, too, if you're interested interested in playing our Friday night games. I'm looking forward to it. Um, so, unless you all have any interesting questions you want to just throw out there, I think that's about what we're going to end for today. Um, yeah. So... Hop, make sure you hop over to our Discord channel. Uh, it's discord.gg slash ESD7D capital J, capital J, capital G, T U. It's hard to say all that, and it's really difficult to write, too. It's a easier, easier to just click the link. So if you've got that, hop on over, join in our community. Um, help us create characters and character backstories, and we'll do the same for you. That's basically what the entire community is about, is building character backstories together and experiencing the joy of creating these characters and these character backstories. So until next time, which will be Monday, which for our movie, I haven't decided on the movie yet, but I'll probably post that uh, either Sunday or Monday morning. Um, so Monday, 6 p.m. Pacific, right here on this channel, we'll be watching another movie. It's literally just a chance to come together, enjoy some fun together, watch a movie together, chat about whatever the heck we want. It usually turns into something like a uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000-esque commentary on the game, uh, which is always fun. Um, so come join in the fun. Uh, the, the, the only downside to the movie watch parties on Twitch is that you have to be a, an Amazon Prime member to be able to watch the movies. That's the only downside. But I love being able to play these movies and spend time with y'all. Uh, and if you have any uh, M movies that are available on Amazon Prime that you would love to see, make sure to throw them in chat or on our Discord and let me know and we'll get them added to the list. So if you come up with something before Monday, I might just play that movie in instead of what I might otherwise do. So. Uh, thank you so much for coming, Bingers. I'm, I'm glad you had a great time. Um, we always try to keep it fun. Um, 
So until next time, so Monday uh, for the movie and then next Friday for another Grain Prompts Live, um, I hope that you take care of yourself, uh, You wear a mask, uh, social distance. If When you become eligible for the uh, COVID vaccine, go ahead and get it so we can help the entire world knock out this COVID vaccine as quickly as possible. Uh, but until next time, I want you to know that I love you and I want to thank you all so very much for coming to see me. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.